the UK service supply visa is part of the UK global uh, mobility business route. It was born on 11th of April 2022. For you to qualify, you must be an employee of an overseas business or a self-employed uh, service provider based overseas and you must be providing a service here in the UK. The tricky bit with uh, this particular route is that you'll need to, uh, to prove uh, when applying that your skills are at least at the level of RQF6, which is the graduate equivalent. And it's not a requirement for you to have a degree. However, you need to show that your skills are at this uh, graduate uh, level role. And there are a certain exceptions to this rule. And in this video, I'm going to explain what these exceptions are. And also I'm going to show you how to find uh, a list of uh, eligible jobs. I'm going to concentrate on the procedure. I'm going to show you um, how to check if you meet the suitability requirements and also how to score the necessary uh, points uh, for the eligibility requirements. The eligibility requirements consist of two parts, the points-based part and the non-points-based part. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to meet uh, both parts of the eligibility requirements. So let us begin. I'll start by explaining uh, the eligibility requirements first. Uh, because it's a points-based uh, system application, the eligibility requirements consist of two parts, uh, the points-based requirements and non-points-based requirements. So let us have a look at the points-based requirements first. So for you to meet the points-based requirements, you need to score 40 points, 20 points for the sponsorship and 20 points for proving that your job is at an appropriate skill level. The 20 points for the sponsorship requirements are given when your sponsor, your employer provides you with the certificate of sponsorship and also there are certain requirements which they need to meet as a sponsor and also they have to prove that this is a genuine position. With regards to the sponsorship, there is certain information which needs to be reflected in this certificate of sponsorship such as your name, the fact that you are being sponsored as a, a service supplier. Also, they need to provide the details of your job, how much they are going to pay for your job, and also uh, that it complies with the national minimum wage requirements when you intend to start your work. And this should be within three months from the date of your application. The certificate of sponsorship can only be used once. It shouldn't be withdrawn or cancelled by the Home Office. And also it has to confirm that you have been working for an overseas service provider for more than 12 months and also confirm that you meet uh, the academic technology approval scheme requirements if Appendix ATS applies to you. And uh, the final piece of information which should be reflected in your certificate of sponsorship is the fact that your contract is registered uh, with the Home Office. Uh, your sponsorship has to be authorized by the Home Office. They should be A-rated and also, as I mentioned before, your contract should be registered with the Home Office and it should cover one of the UK's international trades agreements. And with regards to the genuineness requirements, your employer will need to provide a very brief explanation about your job, mainly that this job does exist. It's not a sham one. It was not created purely for the purposes of you getting a visa to the UK. And also the fact that you you do not intend to undertake uh, an ongoing routine role or to provide an ongoing routine service for a third party, uh, regardless of the nature or length or an arrangement between the sponsor and this third party. So if these requirements are met, then you will be able to get 20 points for the sponsorship requirements and another 20 points you'll be able to get by proving that your job is at an appropriate skill level. And there are two options to choose from. Option number one is when your job is listed in appendix skill occupations for the global business mobility route. Just let me show you how it looks like. So if you go to your browser and you type global business mobility eligible occupations and codes, you'll see these guidance in front of you and you'll see a list of eligible occupations. So you need to make sure that your occupation is on uh, this list. 
It is of crucial importance uh, to choose the appropriate code for the job you intend to undertake. So there has to be a genuine need and also you'll need to have the appropriate skills and qualifications and experience to undertake this job. The Home Office, when checking this particular element uh, of your application, will be checking the sponsor's history of compliance and they will also be checking all other information surrounding your application just to ensure that it is aligned with what you intend uh, to do here in the UK. And of course, we should not forget about the ATS requirements. So the ATS, just to check if this applies to you, you can go to your browser again and you may type, find out if you need uh, an ATS certificate. And here you'll see a link which you may open and uh, you'll see a very helpful form which you may complete in order to find out if this appendix applies to you. If it does, then you'll need to provide the ATS certificate together with the application. So this was our option A. Option B is slightly different. If you would like to apply under option B, you'll need a degree certificate or proof that you have an equivalent level of the technical qualification. Guys, this is unless you are employed by an overseas service provider supplying one of these services. As you can see, if you intend to provide these services, fashion and modeling or entertainment services, you don't need any qualifications at all. So it will be just enough for your employer to confirm that you intend to provide services in these areas. And uh, for the rest of the services, just refer to this uh, table here to see which qualifications you need in order to score 20 points uh, for the option B requirement. With regards to qualifications and registrations, it is important to remember that when you apply, you need to hold professional qualifications and registrations required to provide the services under the UK law or sectoral requirements. When applying under option B, you need to demonstrate that you have sufficient experience. Usually it's three years. If you intend to provide chef de cuisine services under the Career Forum UK Economic Partnership Agreement, you need to have six years of experience. And if you were working as a self-employed overseas service provider, uh, you need to have at least six years of experience in this field. This was our option B. So if you meet the requirements for either option A or B, then you'll get the required 20 points for the job at an appropriate skill level requirement. So if the sponsorship requirement and the job at an appropriate skill level requirement are satisfied, then the points based requirement part of the application is met and and then we need to look at the non-points based requirements. There are five. First of all, the entry requirements. Entry requirements only means that in order for you to work as the UK service supply, you need to make a prior application. So you cannot just travel to the UK and say that you intend to work as a UK uh, service supply visa. So this is uh, quite obvious. The next one is the nationality requirements. And let me explain what they mean by this you'll need to be a national of the country or a territory in which the overseas service provider is based. If you're not a national of the country where the overseas service business provider is based, there are a number of exceptions. So you need to check uh, the global mobility appendix in, in order to check if one of these exceptions apply to you. The next one is uh, the financial requirements. Uh, this is very similar to all other points-based system application. You don't need to show that you have funds. You don't need to meet the financial requirements if you have been in the UK for more than 12 months and you still have permission to stay here in the country. If this doesn't apply, for example, you were in the UK for less than 12 months or you intend to make your application from outside the UK, then you'll need to show that you had at least £1,270 in your bank account for at least 28 days, unless your A-rated sponsor intends to sponsor you in this application. In this case, they will need to mention this information in their certificate of sponsorship and confirm that at least this amount will be available for your use when this application is granted. And the final non points based requirement for the UK service supplier visa application is the maximum length of assignment requirement. So as a rule of thumb, you cannot remain in the UK as the UK service supplier for more than five years in any six year period of time. Guys, I need to remember that this rule applies even if you stayed here under any other global business mobility or intra-company transfer routes. So these were our non-points based uh, requirements. And if you meet them, this means that the eligibility requirements uh, will be met. 
And now let us have a look at the validity and the suitability requirements. The reason I decided to cover those after the eligibility requirements is very simple because they are the same or almost the same for all points based applications. Uh, the validity requirements consist of two parts. You need to comply with the procedural part and also you should not forget about the switching rules if you are making your application here in the UK. So with regards to the procedure, as always, you need to complete the appropriate online form. This depends on uh, where you're applying from. So if you're applying from outside the UK, the form you need uh, to complete is called Global Business Mobility Visa. And if it's in the UK, then it's Global Business Mobility without the word visa. With regards to the fees you need to pay at the time of recording of this video visa fee is 259 pounds very reasonable and also you need to pay the immigration health surcharge so if it is for the main applicants usually it's 624 pounds per year if your dependent applies and your child is under the age of 18 they'll need to pay at the reduced rate of 470 pounds as with all other visa applications you will be expected to provide your passport with the application just to prove your nationality, your identity and your age and all other supporting documents uh, with the application. You need to submit your biometrics and if you're applying from outside the UK, then you also need to uh, submit your tuberculosis test certificate if your country is on appendix T list. And let me show you how you can check this. So if you go to your browser and you type appendix T, the first.gov.uk website is the one you need. So when you open this website, you'll see immigration rules appendix T. And here is a list of countries which are relevant. So if you have been residing in one of these countries, which is here on the list, then this means you'll need to provide your tuberculosis test certificate with the application. It's either if you were a national of this country or you simply resided in this country for more than six months. If you are a national or one of these countries, However, you have been residing in another country which is not on this list for six months just before making the application. This means you don't need uh, to submit your tuberculosis test certificate together with the application. So these were our validity requirements, the procedural part. And also, as I said before, if you are making your application in the UK, you need to, to make sure that none of the switching rules apply to you. Switching is a legal process which allows a person who is already in the UK uh, to switch uh, their immigration category. So for example, if someone came here as a partner of a British citizen and then they separated and they intend to stay here as a, uh, let's say, UK service supplier, you'll need uh, to make sure that you can switch to this particular category. And people in these categories, unfortunately, cannot switch in the UK. This means that if, for example, you are here as a visitor or as a, as a short-term student or as a parent of a child, student or as a seasonal worker, worker or as a domestic worker in a private household or if your application was granted outside the immigration rules this means that you will be expected to leave the country and make your application from outside the UK. So these were our very simple and straightforward validity requirements. So we've covered the eligibility requirements and the validity requirements and finally in order for you to succeed in your UK uh, service supply visa application you need to meet the suitability uh, requirements. So if you're applying from outside the UK, you need to make sure that you meet the requirements of part nine of the immigration rules. And let me show you this part nine of the immigration rules. So if you go to your browser and you type immigration rules part nine, the first.gov.uk website is the one you need. So here you open the general grounds for refusal and you'll find a very detailed list as to when your application may be refused on suitability grounds. And I would like to draw your attention, guys, here that there are two types of suitability requirements, mandatory and discretionary. Mandatory is when the application must be refused. So if you're caught by one of the mandatory requirements, so if you see the word must, in the wording of the rule, then this means that the decision maker has no choice and they have to refuse your application. However, if uh, you see the word may in the wording of the rule, then this means that the decision maker has got a choice. So let me give you two examples of the mandatory and the discretionary grounds for refusal. So let's say uh, you have been convicted of a criminal offense in the UK or overseas with a custodial sentence of more than 12 months. Unfortunately, if this is the case, then your application will be refused refused because you will be caught by one of the mandatory grounds for refusal. And that is because we can see the word must here. So the decision maker has no choice. If this rule applies to you, then unfortunately the application 
will be refused. And just to give you an example of the discretionary ground for refusal, let's say you have a debt to NHS, so this one, and this debt is for more than £500, then in this case, the decision maker has got a choice. They can either refuse or allow your application. However, if this particular rule applies to you, I strongly recommend that you repay this debt before making the application because there is absolutely no guarantee that the decision maker will be willing to exercise the discretion in your favor and most likely they will not be willing to do so and therefore I strongly advise you to take every single possible step to make sure that none of the suitability requirements apply to you. So uh, part nine applies for those who make the application from outside the UK. If you're already in the UK, you need to first of all, again, uh, check that none of the suitability requirements uh, listed at part nine of the immigration rules apply to you. And secondly, that you are here not as an overstayer unless exceptions of paragraph 39E apply and that you are not an immigration bail. Let me explain what paragraph 39E is all about. So paragraph 39E provides exceptions for overstayers when they make the application. Here they say that if uh, you make the application and your visa already expired, the Secretary of State may disregard the fact that the visa expired if you made your UK service uh, supply visa application within 14 days from the date when the visa expired and you can show that there was a good reason beyond your control or the control of your representative which prevented you from making your application before. And also this rule may apply For example, in the circumstances when you applied for an administrative review or you appealed against the decision and it was refused and then you made your next application within 14 days. And also, if you became an overstayer during this period of time between 24th of January and 31st of August 2020, these are the coronavirus exceptions. The final paragraph 39E exception may apply if you remain here on a Hong Kong British nationality overseas uh, visa. And these were our suitability requirements. As you can see, in order for someone to succeed in their UK service supplier visa, all you need to do is just to prove that you meet these three requirements, the validity, the suitability and the eligibility requirements. If these are met, then your visa will be granted for six months. Unless you came here under the United Kingdom European Union a Trade and Cooperation Agreement and you are a national of any member state of European Union or you are a Swiss national and you are here because of the temporary agreements between this Swiss Confederation and the United Kingdom on services and mobility. If the application is refused, unfortunately, you'll have no right of appeal. You can only apply for an administrative uh, review. There will be certain conditions imposed on your stay, so you can only work for your sponsor. You can study here and you can come here together with your dependents. You can work as a volunteer and you can uh, travel in and out as many times as you want to. You will not be allowed to claim any benefits you cannot change jobs or do any second job and you cannot apply for indefinite leave to remain so you cannot settle in the uk if you came here as the uk service supplier and these were the rules for the uk service supply visa application